Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Royce and I am super excited to continue our new mini series based on our new must have Web Handling Handbook. In this clip, we will attempt to answer another age old question which winder control curve is best for me? I know your time is precious, so let's get started. As a subject matter expert who has been at about 1,000 plants and has seen about 10,000 winders, I'm often asked questions related to control settings on the winder. I understand that the pain of waste delay and customer complaints related to winding is quite real. I also understand that people want quick solutions because they have a boatload of problems on their plate. Yet, this impatience can lead to the Pollyanna pitfall as I teach in my industrial problem solving class. It may be totally unrealistic to think you can solve your problems, or perhaps even just one of your problems, merely by turning a knob. Especially if you don't understand the principles involved. Thus, before anyone can go even one step further, you must answer with great specificity which defect or defects are you hoping to reduce. That is, because winding defects are a messy mix of tight, loose, taper, operational, machine design and maintenance, process design, product design, material quality, and many, many other factors. So. How do we even get started? We get started by noting that most winding defects you will ever run into can be classified into tight, loose, taper, or operational. Common examples are listed here. The careful reader will note that core crush shows up in three categories tight, loose, and product design. The reason is that there are three totally different defects that go by the name of core crush. There are at least a half dozen cases each of starring and telescoping. So you must be super careful not to jump to conclusions and literally go to school to save time and trouble in addition to reducing waste delay in customer complaints. Thus, it should be quite clear now that general conclusions such as wind loose or use maximum taper are woefully naive. Thus, the more useful response is specificity. What defect or defects are most important to you and what category are they in? Let's step way back and make this whole area of winding defects and curves way, way more simple. So simple that you and your operators may only need to know two things to get started, both of which are readily found if not already known. The first is if the defect is a tightness related defect then, if so, is it tight loose or taper. The previous slide gave a list of the more common ones and I will give you references at the end of this presentation. The second is if the defect favors the top of the roll or the bottom of the roll, which you should already know quite readily. Note that if it does not favor the top or bottom of the roll, then it is very likely not a tightness related defects for reasons that we don't have time to discuss here. Once you know whether your specific defect is a tight, loose, or taper defect, and then whether it favors the top or the bottom of the roll, then you are in a great position to make a move on one or more of your winder curves. 
Let us just simplify everyone's life and state for the great majority of cases you can do quite fine with the two-point method shown here, which is becoming near universal for winder controls. There, you can adjust the starting and ending value in calibrated engineering units, of course, of tension, dip, and torque. Using what we've learned so far, let us now practice on out-of-round rolls. That is a loose defect that favors the outside. Then, clearly, we would begin by tightening any or probably all of the TNTs at the top of the roll, but may or may not do anything with the bottom of the roll. Using what we've learned so far, let us practice on blocking. Blocking is a tight defect that favors the core. Thus, we would begin by reducing any or all of the TNTs at the start of the wind, but may or may not do anything with the top of the roll. While this super simple strategy often works well to begin with many tightness-related defects, some subtypes of starring and telescoping are taper defects, and the strategy is slightly different. There are about a half a dozen totally different types of telescoping. Two of the more common are given here. Type 1A is by far the most common. It is easy to diagnose using four checks, the most telling of which is J-line inner layer slippage of the layers near the core. Once we thoroughly diagnose our trouble as a type 1A telescope, we then know that there are six remedy options, most unpleasant even if they are effective. The place to begin is a variation of maximum taper, i.e. start tight and finish loose. In contrast, the type 2 telescope is totally, totally different defect that is most common with adhesive laminates such as PSAs or other products with low initial tack. This type is easily checked via four criteria and the half dozen remedy options follow from that. A short clip is not the place to teach winding theory or winding defects. I do that in great detail in my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class. The important point here is to emphasize yet again that a telescope is not a telescope is not a telescope. This is also true of core crush, starring, wrinkling, and many, many other common problems. Yet. Getting the subtype is quite trivial once you are shown how. Here is a comparison of these two common telescope types and how they can be easily determined, usually at a glance. More importantly, the best curve, or better yet, TNT control strategies, are totally, totally different because the defects themselves are totally, totally different even if they look superficially similar. Of course, most people have more than one winding defect in their plant, and this should not surprise you because there are many defects, many products, many winders, and many variables in any single plant. However, what most people do not know is that you can have more than one defect in the very same single wound roll. It is quite common, especially if you have web thickness profile variations across the width of the web. In the previous slide, you will recall that one telescope is a taper defect and the other is a tight defect. With some difficult adhesive products, you can have both a type 1 and type 2 at the same time, in which case the TNT strategy is a compromise mix of the two that we just gave. In other words, 
a medium tight start with a super loose finish. But there are many, many other examples of having two troubles at once in the same roll that we could give. For example, you could have starring on one end of the roll, a loose defect, and blocking on the other end of the same roll, which is a tight defect. A tight and loose defect in the same wound roll. My apologies. I know that was an awful lot to throw at you in one clip. However, these are foundational and fundamental concepts in winding which you must know in order to most effectively and most efficiently work on the common winding troubles. If you wish, you can replay this clip. I've often found that it sometimes takes me a couple of plays or more before a new concept sticks. If you want to learn more, there are many, many resources because winding is one of the best documented of the web handling sciences. There are more than 1,000 articles, columns, and conference papers on the subject. Among these, well, you will find a, about a dozen books on winding and about 20 PhD theses, including one of mine. Obviously, reading any of those would not be a great way to start to learn the subject. Instead, let me suggest that the quicker and easier way to learn winding, and that is one module of my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class that has been taken by 5,000 students just like you. In an hour or two, you will learn most of the key concepts you will need to go about your winding business. For those needing more, I teach a two-day advanced winding course. These courses are available in your plant, in public venues, and as video on demand through AIMCAL, APIDA, and TAPI. For completeness, I will mention that my good friend, colleague, and quite capable co-author, Tim Walker, also has a module and a one-day section on winding in his courses. Finally, that and much, much more can be found in 50 pages of the Web Handling Handbook. However, don't be intimidated, because this chapter on winding, in particular, is written at the most basic level, so that it would serve a lead winder operator, for example. Yet, in that chapter would be a number of concepts that would not be familiar to even some winding experts. In short, something for everybody, written in everyday language. Thank you so very much for joining me in this mini-series showcasing some of the crown jewels of our new book. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will continue our tour of our new book by answering a foundational question in winding, and that is, what is tightness? If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. See you next time.